Welcome back, guys, to another Harbor podcast. I'm the Kino Cowboy, the biggest Kinophile of them all. I'm here with Scott and Boston Flasher. We're going to be talking about some shit we've been watching, you know, just like usual. We're going to be talking Squid Game. We're going to be talking the Muppets, of all things. Uh, You know, whatever else. Scott, do a mic test real quick. Uh, One, two, three. This is me. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, we're we're cool and we're booing, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, first, I want to talk about what what do I want to talk about? Oh, yeah. Fandom. Duh. Uh, do you see that, fandom fucking dropped off all the bangers dude. yesterday? The biggest uh, hype for me is the fact that the co-creator of, of the animated series is teaming up with uh, the director of the upcoming Batman to make a new adult animated Batman. Did you read his quote on that? He says it's more Batman the animated series than Batman the animated series. That's bold. Whatever the that fuck that bold. means. He might even like, say it's brave and bold. He says it's like pretty much like a spiritual continuation of that kind of like thing they're going for. I'm excited, man. Bruce Tim. I ha- we haven't seen much from him in a long time. Fucking dark deco, like, but like aged up for like the viewers that are like able yeah. to appreciate shit I'm nostalgia they... obsessed millennials yeah hey, i'm hoping you know. that uh we can uh like harley quinn was introduced into the dc universe because of batman the animated series right yes I'm hoping we can get someone just as iconic for this new series oh it's like a new character a little new ip action that'd be fucking tight Terry McGill. No, I no. hope they. Ha- I hope they give Robin a boyfriend just to piss everybody <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, he has yeah, one. At this it's point, called, dude, it's, it's called Bruce fuck. Wayne. Oh yeah, hey, man, that's, that's <laughs> no, no. Me, bro. If uh, if Bruce Wayne were a rapper, he'd be Drake. <laughs> what? I don't agree with that statement. I'm gonna strike it from the record here. <laughs> um, I am watching um, Batman the Animated Series for the first time, having a good time with it. Um, Sick. I was worried it was gonna be one of those shows that you can't really get into unless you were nostalgic for it when you were younger but uh it, it's got classic batman tales and all the villains are like so like focused on and developed that it's like how come so many shows after this failed to do so you know dude yeah it's like there's some villains in there that they they flesh out so much and then later on through the fucking trials of time are just awful characters like uh i'm glad you're watching it because you get to see like the Mr. Freeze background and like Mr. Yeah. Freeze background, the absolute shit, man. That whole like episode is fucking amazing. But uh, did y'all did y'all watch the new Batman trailer for the movie? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, it's I visually striking. I'm yeah, for, for, for those it. of us. By the way, I should say for the listeners, Casher's a diehard DC Comics fanboy <laughs> and knows more about comics than probably any of my friends. So. Just have that as background. Yeah, I'm just- the jaded, burnt out on superhero movies guy. It looks visually striking. And I do think Robert Pattinson wouldn't have picked this movie if he wasn't interested in it creatively. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he's getting paid boatloads, but um, oh, yeah. the guy picks his project. <clears throat> Man, Post- Cobblepot, Colin, uh, Colin Farrell is like unrecognizable and I can barely tell it's him. And mm, it's kind of awesome. I want, like well, probably my favorite part of that whole trailer is when he's like giggling to himself like he got away and then there's the fucking Batmobile through the fire. I was like, Fuck yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Which is it, Colin Farrell looks like the dude from Curb Your Enthusiasm that plays Larry David's cousin Andy David. <laughs> he looks like that guy. I'm like, why didn't they just get this guy? But, you know, it's just really I, heard, I heard some people saying Richard Kind should have done it. I'm like, That's Richard him. Kind That's would him. not be convincing. <laughs> That's funny. That's so strange. But uh yeah, so y'all watched the I the only one I watched was The Flash. Um here, here here's what I want from your take, Casher. You think they're jumping into this uh storyline too quickly should they should have done just like a standalone flash first i think we should have gotten a standalone flash just not even like an origin story but to kind of like verify him as an actual hero we're immediately going into the like backstory stuff like what the big thing about flashpoint is like the person that goes like almost causes this cataclysmic event is like the mega flash basically his name is zoom and like he goes kind of insane and is the true reason why his mom died and so like 
him going back and trying to refix this we don't have that established like background of that yet yeah plus i i don't know i'm over the snyderverse personally i cannot get into it as much as other people but zach snyder's not directing it yeah but it's part of that whole thing i don't know i like it isn't yeah. it i don't like i i understand a lot of people like it i couldn't even get into like the snyder cut uh, i oh, fell well. asleep halfway through it watched it again and i was like i still don't like this but and i think part of that's because you're such a big fan of the comics for sure, man. Like, I loved Suicide Squad. That shit was fucking wild. I loved it. I had a great the, time. The Suicide Squad or Suicide the Squad? The Suicide Squad. No, I like the OG one where they make Killer Croc a racist caricature. <laughs> well, what is it that you want after saving the world? Oh, I want Hennessy and BET. <laughs> fucking idiotic. <laughs> the, uh, well, the, the problem is that they're like, oh, shit. Marvel's going to be bringing back the Spider-Man. We, we better bring back our old characters, too. So now they got Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton, which is going to be really fucking I, strange. I am hype as fuck for Michael Keaton. It's really weird because I saw the show. I was like, "How is this going to even fit, dude? He's so camp that you know it's like so wonky." Like, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I kind of hope that we just get all the Batman's, like dude, fucking no, Val Kilmer. No, no. I really no wish way. we could get. Like, I really oh, wish we could get oh. Caesar Romero as the Joker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll bring him back. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll bring back the OG yeah. Batman. We'll just do a hologram. Because everyone in the in my in the film posting chat were like, you know, arguing over bringing Michael Keaton back and stuff. I was like, no, no, no. See, this isn't even the fan service. The fan service is going to come in the end credits when Christian Bale walks out of the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to me. <laughs> That'd be tight. Yeah, It'd we have Joseph Gordon Levitt as Robin. I'd be mm-hmm. kind of pissed yeah. off. Like, well, you're bringing <laughs> Christian Bale into this now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd be upset. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, a couple other things, dude. Uh, I'm honestly pretty hyped for black adam that's one of my favorite villains and the rock it's like a passion project for him is what he says and uh they show it's a like passion a- project for him because he wants to be a superhero yeah or super yeah villain. it's not as yeah, it's like not it's like the most dark superhero ever like uh whatever what they showed like the first like 45 seconds that he's introduced and he looks badass it'll probably suck i don't know shazam i enjoyed the shit out of shazam i thought that's kind of the tone that dc needs to take i i, and, I uh, agree there the problem is shazam and a lot of the other dc movies follow the same cycle for me where like the first two acts are really good and then the last act it's like yeah it drags the same, on the sure, same superhero trappings that every other superhero movie gets in too much cgi too much stupid convoluted villain shit just and i'm just like no the wonder woman the first wonder woman does the same shit yeah. yeah, man, I, I don't like any of the Wonder Woman movies either. I was not we excited for Wonder Woman 3. Three is that, did that yeah, they happen? accidentally uh talked about it at the fandom. What the like, fuck? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, absolutely it's not. A, did you see Cheetah in the new one? Like, Jesus, fucking I couldn't Christ. bring myself to watch it. It's so bad. I watched it with my parents, and my parents were like hella into it. And I'm like, this is fucking awful. <laughs> like, is Patty Lee's- Jenkins directing the third one? Yeah. Scott? Okay. Oh, that's cool. Should have gone with a different director. I thought she would be busy making her Star Wars movie. Oh yeah, man. Mm. Got priorities, man. Let's that fuck ep- up the Star Wars universe more. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make this another Star Wars cast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, um, speaking of Star Wars Rogue One, um, <laughs> I heard in the new Halloween movie they bring Donald Pleasance back from the dead really yeah i can't believe they fucking made that <laughs> i um, can but i can't i'm sick of fucking shit like that though so i want good horror movies i'm, I'm gonna sick watch of it like later franchise yeah, we, we've had plenty of good horror movies the last 10 years we've had a we've had like a renaissance of good thoughtful yeah horror movies recently but there's also them- room for trashy slasher crap yeah but you can do like trashy slasher good like Remember you're next? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like make movies like that. Quit bringing back fucking Michael Myers. Halloween uh, 2018 was pretty good, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna judge this. It. I'm gonna dra- judge this new one for myself. It is the middle of like a trilogy of films, you know. So. Oh, is it? Yeah. I didn't realize that the the first. Yeah, the third one's gonna be called Halloween Ends until yeah. next financial quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Zing! Got him. Got him. <laughs> you know what else is horror? Kinda. Squid Game. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, Squid Game is kind of. an intense fucking movie or a show, man. I uh, I love Korean shit. I guess that sounds weird, but no, uh, no, they make it's they make good cinema. There, I went I went like uh, during COVID and watched a shit ton of Korean cinema and like TV and stuff, and found myself just like immersed in it. And Squid Game was a pleasant fucking surprise. So if if you've been living under a rock, this is like the most watched TV show of recent memory for everywhere. I think it's the highest watched Netflix show ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Worldwide. Which is crazy. uh, Normally, as a true patrician as myself, uh, I have a a need to resist watching very, very, very popular TV shows uh, just to be a contrarian. But uh, I decided to check it out anyway. I, uh, I did too, really for this podcast. I'm in the same country. I, I didn't make you. I know you didn't, but then I I'm felt like I had. I'm a sheeple. I, I got hyped but, uh, up on it by people and watched it. I watched it over the past 48 hours. To my surprise, it was entertaining and the art direction was really good. So, yeah, let's get into it. I uh, I think one of the coolest things about the, the fact that it's being the most watched is that it is a Korean, like it's a foreign language TV show. And uh, it's kind of getting people into that. Although I feel like people are all watching like the fucking dub. And I got like through five seconds of the dub and I was like immediately like, I gotta change this. No, nope. like it gets nah. lost in translation. You didn't watch it dub, did you, Scott? No, absolutely. Okay, good. You, I'm just making take sure. me for it. Who do you I think know. I am? I'm offended by that question. <laughs> well, I just like it, some people are. And um, I'd like to point out why you shouldn't watch it dubbed. Now, for animated stuff, occasionally I understand there's some good dubs like Cowboy Bebop or Full Metal Alchemist. There's good dubs out there for animated shows. It makes a little more sense. But for Squid Game, it detracts. Uh, some of the translations aren't the best. And also the biggest um, problem is the red light, green light scene, which I watched yeah. in both languages. And let me explain to you guys if you all watched in one but didn't watch the other. Uh, in the Korean version, the 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 robot child sings a little da 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 da, and then there's a pause, and then it whips its head around, and and there's a there's a rhythm to it, and it makes it way more suspenseful. In American, well English, I guess. In American. <laughs> in English. <laughs> It's just a little girl that goes red light, green light, and there's no rhythm. There's no, it, it's less suspenseful. I was like, damn, this scene just doesn't hit as good to me in English. So if, um, it's probably too late if you've already, if you're watching this podcast, but uh, I definitely recommend watching it in the language it was made in. Uh, challenge yourself to read subtitles and you'll be able to watch many more movies. Yeah, if you have a third grade reading level, you can read the subtitles of this show. So, <laughs> which uh, I know I, I don't really trust our fan base, you know, namely my mom, to really be able to do that. But shout out to yeah, Scott did your mom, mom. watch this? Uh, she probably won't watch this one. She doesn't watch Squid Game. No, she actually might she like it though. She likes Game, that sort yeah. of stuff. Weirdly enough, but <laughs> the uh, no, now, don't watch. You don't want to watch some actor, some second rate actor try to imitate a good actor's lip movements in another right. language. That's why, because in animation, about. you are, the actors always kind of, they animate it first and then they go in and dub over it, the animation to match it with the lip movements. And so they are, they already do that in the, in the given language. Um, but in this, because you can definitely read the lips because it's obviously more detailed than Homer Simpson. Um, yeah. Don't just don't do that to yourself. You know, no. Some people, you know, some critics complain that um, there are plenty of other uh, Korean death game shows and movies and stuff. And it's like, okay, that's fine. Maybe that's oversaturated uh, where you live. But uh, where I live, this is um, still pretty fresh. So I'm yeah, going to enjoy it. The whole, the whole elites want to fucking murder the you know peons of the world. Is and it's like we, 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 we got the trip. Hunger Games, but... I'm not, dude, that's not that's my thing. Game. That's for like no. 13 year olds. Shaky cam 101, man. Fuck that. Fuck yeah, the, the editing in that movie is baffling. Yeah, but well, not just um, that. I not guess there's just bat- the... there's Battle Royale too, but that wasn't huge over here. That was more Battle niche. Royale. Battle Royale was a punishment the kids got 
for being a shitty class. It wasn't necessarily the elites being like, oh, we can make these people play games till the death for money for our entertainment. This the is definitely, best- um, yeah, like uh, this is definitely someone who's had a clear vision for a long time and wanted to execute well, dude, it. Dude, exactly did you read he that did. he was like trying to get this show made for like 10 years? Yes. Everybody passed on him and he was like, barely scraping by and then netflix picked it up and now it's the most watched tv show like netflix imagine ever. being more vindicated than that like that's yeah, awesome right? like rush. fuck everyone else uh now man you talked about the biggest show in the world you talked about their art direction dude and i agree dude that shit was stellar all the colors popped and like the the juxtaposition of the dark shit they were doing with like the the bright neons and the uh, the the, the child like things was cool. uh, where the 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 room they sleep is all like clinical looking and gross. Yeah, and then they and walk out nuts. into the corridors and it's like a, the whole scene a, chill, where they, a child's fever dream. Yeah, so like the whole uh, like the whole scene where they just like completely blacked out that room and like had them basically all fucking murder each other. I was like, man, this this is pretty cool. <laughs> I was thoroughly enjoying pretty much that whole series. Now, then, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, going in, did you think the character we were following was gonna actually win it, or did you think someone else was going to win? I thought we were gonna have like a three to four way tie when we started getting introduced to some of these other characters, and then completely got every fucking hope crashed during the Marvel episode. Yeah, for real. I had to stop watching and take a break. I was like, "Fuck me, this sucks." I, yeah, I was kind of convinced like a, the characters were going to either like escape or like break out and like yeah, survive man. or something. Especially with the cop, dude. Even the fucking cop. I was like, oh, this this subplot's going to have it's going to be what like frees everybody or helps everybody. No, he 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 dies too. <laughs> Which is why it's good. Yeah, yeah you know, I love that. There, there is it. there is a lot of this show, and we can go into more detail that I found you know somewhat predictable not in the sense that it was formulaic but just in like this is what needs to happen for the story to continue yeah you know um but they did have enough stakes and enough curveballs thrown in there and just you know when a character died it mattered yes they were developed well enough which is a big it sounds like such a simple thing but so often in 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 everything Uh, uh, shout out to jk rowling for unnecessary deaths yeah, they tell us to feel something, but we have no investment, which is a huge pet peeve of mine. I kind of talked about this during the last yeah. James Bond podcast, um, but we, we do get enough time with all these people. Now, did I think he was going to win? I thought he would make it pretty far because he's the main character. I didn't know if he was going to win, and I didn't know if there would be one winner or if it would be a tie or if maybe even like, Maybe the whole game stuff just goes south and like it yeah. doesn't even finish. It's just like chaos. So um, I do think it's weirdly the way he won, though, is kind of ballsy in the sense that, well, A, you had to attach to a character moment with his brother and having to basically kill his brother. But then B, you, you kind of have him win it and then his life still crap anyway, which is thematically appropriate. Um so there there was no happy ending in that uh this dude it makes charles foster's kane's life look happy and <laughs> is filled with marital bliss by comparison i like that they also, one like... thing this this is one thing i want to address real quick mm-hmm. we grow to like him more but gi hoon i'm gonna try to pronounce these names and remember what i've written down so if you're Gi-hun. korean and i'm listening to this i'm sorry um <laughs> gi hoon like He's not that likable in the beginning, which I feel American producers don't allow yeah. a lot of the time. We're obsessed with having likable characters. And I say, nay, give me a piece of crap who I would never want to talk to on the street, but is interesting to watch. I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. By any objective measure, he's not a good human being. Well, they go from like bringing him in as like a shitty person to humanizing them. To then, like, in the last challenge, like, stripping away, like, his humanity with him having to fucking murder the one dude he was, like, really, besides the old guy, like, close with in the whole thing. And then bringing him back down to, like, the very piece of filth that he truly was for a while. Yeah, because he's not a good person. They even say in the show that he's a good person, some of the other contestants. But the thing is, you're comparing him to the other contestants yeah. who are willing to murder and risk their lives for money. And it's absolutely insane. 
that you would think this guy's a good person. What was uh, what was y'all's favorite death game? Well, for, wait, before we do that, I just wanted to say that what made the whole show more interesting is that instead of it being super secretive and cryptic and stuff and them just going into the game, instead, they're allowed to leave and then come back if they want. And now not only do we get them to come back, we also have the cop who infiltrated it. So now we get yeah. all this behind the scenes shit. It's like you would think normally something like this would save like seeing behind the curtains till the end or something. No, we're seeing behind the curtains a, a lot of the time, mm-hmm. which was not what I expected. I'm glad they did that because it made Ep- it episode two is my favorite episode of the entire show because they get to leave, hang around in Seoul, realize how shitty their normal lives are anyway, and then come back. Right. That, that made the show because the first episode, because I already knew what the show was about. I'd heard about red light, green light from just people talking about it. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is kind of a battle royale, hunger games, rich or bad, capitalism, parasite, yada yada yada. <laughs> and then but that raising of the stakes and also realizing that they are actually choosing to do this in episode two makes it that much darker. And if we're going to go with the capitalist themes, that sort of you can't opt out of capitalism thing. Yeah. It's a nice idea, but you're going to be pitted against your family and friends and everyone in this you know, game. I mean, hell, economics, a subset of economics is called game theory for a reason. There's winners and losers. Okay. Matt, yeah, that was a nuts little turn of events. I was like, what the fuck? Where are they going with this? yep that was it two episodes they leave the game they vote to leave and that's that's the show (laughs) well i was just like well because watching i was like well i already know they're gonna vote to stay and it's gonna suck and then they voted to leave and i was like okay glad you uh also i didn't think about this the guy who voted for them to leave we and i did not expect this we learned in the last episode was the puppet master of the whole thing yeah that was the shit yeah which is heartbreaking as a viewer um <laughs> so but the thing is that. now that i think about it he was the one who was the final vote who voted for them to leave yeah so that's him screwing with people and playing with people for fun even more yeah and that's something i didn't think about until just now no. man i know with the with the whole cop subplot there i love that we got a lot of the background but it's that organization is still mysterious as fuck yeah like there's still a whole lot. Yeah, more I, that I'm glad it didn't bust out. it completely wide open. Oh yeah, but uh, bust it wide open. I I have to say, uh, I I can't lie. Uh, from the very beginning, I was suspicious of that old man. I was like, he's number one. He there's something off about this guy. He and, was and, number one. But then one. it got to the marbles episode, and I was like, oh okay, I was wrong, and now I feel bad, and I'm emotionally, uh invested in him surviving god better. damn that marble episode dude that marble episode's um, probably my favorite episode is that your favorite uh, game uh i actually i think my favorite game was the 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 hopscotch one just because of how fucking it demands you to be brutal and it demands you to like <laughs> really fuck everyone up and then you finally see the gangster get his comeuppance yeah from the crazy chick yeah fuck that guy one of the most like back to that marvel episode dude the whole thing where he's like fucking with his dementia and then at the end he reveals like hey man i wasn't actually like fucked up and like gihun's like oh my god i'm a fucking bad person like just that self-realization was just (laughs) intense for me and then the whole like taking the immigrant and like confusing him and making him walk around so i can (laughs) i was like fuck dude i I texted my brother because he's the one who's been wanting me to watch it. So like, I just finished the Marvel episode. I'm going to fucking bed. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> I was really pissed off about Ali, the Pakistani. Sang-woo, fuck well, Sang-woo. especially because uh, on TikTok, I read a, uh, I, I thought I read a spoiler that Ali like wins or whatever. And I was like, oh great, now I know who wins. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck they said that for. I guess just to troll people. Did they watch? Did anybody watch the dub at all? Did they give? Ali like a fucking actual accent. Oh, I, did, I don't know. I didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering because he has like he technically has an accent in the Korean dialect because I mean they point that out and he's like learning these other words and ways to say things. Uh, so I'm curious if we got fucking. Oh Aku my god! Fucking death. Game. I'm gonna look right now. Hold on, I'm muting <laughs> my mic. I'll, I'll be back. If he's like, "Hello, my friends," like that'd be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> they get fucking what Hagazaria to voice him. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
The Simpsons to go on Scooby Doo. That'd be horrible, dude. <laughs> yeah, very, very impressed with the show. Um, yeah, the death game with the hopscotch, the whole pushing someone into a plate of glass, especially that last one that's saying that's when like, I was like, I was pretty dumb with saying we already after what he did to Ali. And I was like, maybe, you know, you have to do that. It was a one on one challenge. They had no idea. Like, you want to live. And when he pushed that fucking old man over who's like inspecting the panes of glass yeah. because he's an expert on it, I was like, fuck this guy. Well, also, like, like, give him a couple more seconds. Yeah, for a while I was like, okay, this guy's doing what he needs to do. You know, yeah, but, it's necessary. I was like, fuck this guy. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, dude, yeah, because he gets, I like how pathetic he gets in the Marble episode when he realizes he's going to die. He's begging, he's like, like doing begging anything. and pleading. Yeah, do you see what from being so like, gross? Goes from what they would most likely consider someone in like an elitist, like he's a doctor, he's a well-known doctor. Right. He's in debt because he had shitty money management, but goes from someone who's like fully above people on like the social echelons and then on his knees to like this lowly person. It's, fucking it was pathetic, fucking pathetic. Yeah. And then seeing him like, I saw him put the marbles underneath the fucking shirt and I was like, Oh, he's fucking doing something. This dude's being sketchy. And then rest I'm glad of we got to Ali, see I'm glad we got to see the scene where his mom is like surprised that the police are looking for him and shit. Yeah. And like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah, man. I uh that was he was about to kill himself. Yeah. It was interesting as fuck, dude. I I the 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 backgrounds of like all the main characters and even like a lot of the side characters are all really interesting and unique i loved that we had a north korean defector as one of the main characters yeah fuck, that's really fucking unique and then uh do you, there was like the, there was a married couple in the death game that had to play the marble game against each other i would have killed myself too uh, yeah if, what the if, fuck? I, if i if i had to watch my wife die because of me and that yeah, I'd kill myself <laughs> yeah afterwards. Dude, it's not worth it at that point you know there's no way that's fucking crazy to me man like it's it's crazy to think that like a lot of the thought processes that I had towards these games were played out in the games too. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was really cool. I, I think my favorite part, one of my favorite parts throughout the whole thing was whenever uh, they're playing the, the gangster dudes playing with one of his little henchmen, the henchmen's kicking his ass. Oh yeah. So they're getting like real competitive and talking mad shit to each other. The whole time. <laughs> yeah. He just fucking so breaks good. character. He's like, what's up <laughs> <Yeah>. little bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it felt really good to see that after the dude's like starting riots and being a real fucking wise guy. Uh, just like the types of characters they had in there was real unique. And how do you uh, think Tony Soprano would do in this food game? <laughs> shit, I don't know. <laughs> the uh, that's, a, that's a Kino question. <laughs> the the uh, the honeycomb the candy they made uh, it just made me hungry more. Really anything. stressful. As, kind of and, and I made the candy myself a few days ago and, yeah. and feeling how like easily breakable it was made it like even stre- more Isn't stressful. Isn't it like really about. thin peanut brittle pretty much? No, it's like um, it's like a, almost a honey like, brittle. Yeah, it's like sugar. It's like caramel, but like the yeah. baking soda makes it into this really crisp texture it, it it looks crunchier in the show than it is in real life it's actually very like it's actually a great texture i'd recommend it yeah i'd have to try it do you guys um, think that the actor who played gihan is getting mad pussy right now after <laughs> licking that fucking umbrella out of the candy <laughs> <laughs> also i'd like to say I, i'm glad the protagonist uh was like an older guy like almost in his 50s like late yeah. 40s i was like you know pathetic loser yeah he was uh, definitely like my life didn't work out the way i wanted it to type thing yeah and, uh, that that just adds to it because so much of this is about physical endurance and such mm-hmm. which uh, was like your this. favorite game scott scott i don't know i mean for the plot probably marbles the first one red light green light that was so basic just to set set it up um yeah, this but it's like is, this is going to sound iconic. different. The actual Squid Game I found interesting just because I had never heard of that game before because it's Korean, and I'm yeah. not even talking about in the context of the show. I'm just talking about as a playground game. Um, I think I really liked the 
the glass panels one That's the one because it's so simple. And also it's, they had a moment cause I was kind of thinking this, not doing just the math, but they had that one guy who was a mathematician or whatever think, what are my odds of succeeding? He's like one in 32,000 something. And so, and I thought that too, cause it's exponential. It's two to the power of however many spaces there are. So yeah. that, that gets real out of hand real quick. And that's sadistic. Um, also, I felt very smug because I thought I'm always thinking what I would do in these situations. And I always thought I would pick number 16. And then it was like, ah, yeah, that's good. That was a good well, choice, Scott. You'd huh. win the squid game, except you don't <laughs> speak Korean. So that'd be a problem. <laughs> well, now thinking back to it, knowing who the puppeteer is, uh, the old man is giving like all this advice to uh, tug of uh, tug or what's it called? Tug of war. It's yeah. Rope, just tug of war. Yeah. <laughs> just a tug of war. It's only yes. Yeah. He's played he's played, team. Do you think he's played multiple like death games? No, 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 no. He was very like specific about how like this time you know he wanted to actually feel something and do it himself. Word oh, differently. Well, it's like if if tug of war would have like gone south, would they have like what would they have done for the old man? Yeah, I mean he would be dead, and the games yeah. would keep going for the yeah. other rich people. That's that's all it would be. That's and why then, he was um, like, "Oh shit, boys, this is how we do it." <laughs> he didn't want to die, <laughs> even though he was actually had like cancer or whatever. Yeah, fuck yeah. So he, he didn't care. We gotta, that we, much. we gotta watch out in real life for these fucking elites with cancer. To start these <laughs> fucking squid games. Uh, I think they would have the billion dollars to fix it, but you know, whatever. And I uh, I thought it was warped that all the rich people were using people as furniture, basically like the, yeah like this the show world. thematically i would not call subtle no, no it's fair. which I is honestly it's... part of its appeal because we're at a moment in history where people are questioning our financial institutions yeah um and that's why the show because it's an unsubtle look at that yeah so. absolutely i don't think koreans like the elite too much after like parasite <laughs> and fucking squid Game. yeah if i get anything from korean it's that um wealth disparity is a problem there i looked into the numbers of it yeah it is a problem they do have kind of an underclass of workers household debt is high uh and and it's you know probably like any i'm sure seoul dude seoul is like a million more people than new york city right so if new york's expensive seoul's got to be expensive even if wages and cost of living is lower well you see these little mom and pop shops like uh sangwoo's mom had of just like in the corner little corner tent basically where she's selling squids and all that and it's like mm-hmm. she can't be bringing up enough money to really live properly uh and just talking about the wealth disparity like it, that's a no, very no of course not it's like all of korean cinema that i've seen recently like uh a few months ago i watched memories of murder for the first time and like oh, man i've been willing to that. watch that it's on hulu uh it uh they have a lot of his work on hulu actually which is cool um, but like seeing the village, they go from like a big city to the village where the murders happen. And that the village is like super fucking poor. Yeah. And it's, it's really interesting to see that they have these types of like the rural stuff almost feels set, like trapped in time a while. And uh, it's interesting to see that like throughout all of the, the Korean cinema that I've seen like shit, you even got like Snowpiercer and stuff like that. Yeah. So, Which, uh, people are like well snowpiercer isn't very subtle and i'm like i don't give a fuck like yeah, so no, not no, everything has to subtle. be subtle i, well, like I also how, wonder how um, much fit you said that is. what anyway i'm saying <laughs> i like how stylized it is um, yeah i agree my biggest problem with squid game and this is a problem with plenty of uh asian cinema uh when they direct scenes that are supposed to be in english the english is really bad like, yeah, <laughs> like it comes off so fucking phony i'm like dude <laughs> hello got a, uh, this is the game director. <laughs> well that's interesting i didn't i didn't have a problem with the english in this the dialogue for the english was so lame no yeah, the other writing was fucking very... are you just talking about the rich people talking to each yes. other yeah yeah it, it was not good Go have your fun, man. Like, yeah, it came, it came off so bad. I was like, fuck. I See, to me, I understand what you're saying. 
to me, it didn't come off as a translation problem or anything like that. It came off as we're really trying to display these billionaires as a bunch of douchebags. Um, no, but it's just like not. Ju- yeah, it's the writing and the delivery. It's not good. Well, it's almost well, I like think some of the writing. I think some of the writing in Korean is questionable. I think honestly, the actress. I'm not going to remember her name. The one we see take cigarettes out of a yeah. capsule in her vagine. The, I think her acting is hammy in every scene. I know that's the character. I know it's over the top, but like it, it takes me out of the show. Well, here's Just another her. problem is that uh, I'm uh, a woman on TikTok who s- speaks fluent Korean, watched the show and was like, even the subtitles are, uh, mistranslating shit and she says it affects some of the characters including that woman you were just talking about um she was like she said like for example when they're pairing off uh where you have to choose like um a partner or wait which one is it and they're like in the white it's marbles room. where they have to choose yeah, a partner. Right oh, yeah marbles yeah and she's like out. desperately trying to find like a group or whatever and she's like in the in the text in the english translation she says like um you know i'm not very smart but like i i know how to figure shit out please take me but the lady said that in in korean what she's saying is that like she was a genius she just didn't have a chance to go to college and finish college and do all this shit and like it kind of changes how you feel about her and it changes a lot her comeuppance so I'm wondering what other shit was mistranslated and it kind of makes me, I don't know, go, go learn Korean nerd. Well, I just, um, the people that do the translations for Netflix and other shows aren't, it's kind of like, they, they're not paid that much. And like, they go really quickly, you know, and, and translation, of- translation is poor paying translation yeah. pays poorly, which is which a is shame. Insane. And I think, that's only it's only going to get worse because it's less and less appreciated as um AI translations become more available. I'm sure we're going to get to the point, maybe not for Netflix production. I mean, we're already getting to the point where businesses are saying we're not going to pay a translator. We're just going to have Google do this and it's for a packaged product. So who cares? Because I'll, I'll read stuff like that. Again, I live in Spain. I'll read stuff where I'm like, who translated this? There are times I'll read. Sometimes I when I watch things in English. I watch it with Spanish subtitles anyway, just to practice my, you know, as a new vocabulary and stuff. There are times I read the Spanish subtitles. I'm like, I would not have translated it that way. Or like, you're missing this part of the English dialogue by translating it in that manner. Um, There's a lot lost in translation for sure. Yeah. Um, Anime, uh, like the the dubs for, or the subs for anime. Sometimes I, I always watch subtitles on like all of my media a lot of the time just because I miss things. I, I have bad hearing in some things. Um, so I have it on, if, even if I'm watching like a dubbed anime, just in the background, and I'll notice that like what they're saying is completely different from what is actually on the subtitle. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> it's, it's annoying. It's I'll do annoying. that out of curiosity on my rewatch of Evangelion, which I yeah. need to finish the remakes. But I would. Yeah. I watched it in, yeah, I've been busy. I've been watched it in the dub with the English subtitles as well. And yeah, yeah. there were some, definitely some character moments. Oh, and that yeah. way you can satisfy both the people who hate to read and the weebs who insist on yeah. dubs. <laughs> now, when I was uh, when I was 14, freshman, I was convinced. I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch Revenge of the Sith in French and it's going to help me learn French better and I won't fail this class. And I failed the class. Yeah, that's uh, that's Air Walquist, our German teacher from high school. That was his way of teaching us a lot of the time was to throw on a fucking uh, regular movie in English, like Lord of the Rings and throw on the German subtitles. <laughs> yeah, you, you really, yeah, no, that was, that's a terrible way to learn. You really got to, I, I actually did, it did help my Spanish. I watched in Spanish, A New Hope, with the Spanish subtitles, because sometimes there's sometimes there's just idiomatic things that you miss. Um, I think being uh, any learning any more languages than the one you were born with is uh, wrong. No, yeah. even even people learning English. Yeah, I think we should yeah. all speak baby. No battles. more English. We have <laughs> enough English speakers in here. You know, we're, we're good. <laughs> no, I think we should all convert the whole world into English, dude. I'm sick of. Sick I'm working of on it, bro. Not being like we're me. going to. I mean. 
it, it's like a second language in, in most European countries. Shit, you know, it's in most country, in countries, period. Yeah, in the world. Uh, my, uh, my 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 thoughts on Squid Game though is like I hope with the popularity of Squid Game we get some more banger foreign shows that are produced, which we have been. We've had like uh, Alice in Borderlands really good. They have a few others on there, like Space Sweepers, which has got the main chick from uh handmade I've, I've never even heard of that oh man space sweepers is korean guardians of the galaxy basically it's pretty oh bad. that's okay yeah i'm down <laughs> I <love laughs> you, that. you sold me <laughs> well it's the fact that parasite won best picture is already oh, yeah. a big, big step forward for now we just Asian need more it is and the fact and... that people like he won't listen to this people like my brother are watching a foreign film with subtitles who he's not an unintelligent guy by any stretch of the imagination yeah. but that's just not something he would do you know, yeah, and I wouldn't catch a single member of my family watching fucking foreign films and, uh, unless it's fucking anime and it's, you know, <laughs> whatever. which, uh, you know, that's trash doesn't count anyway. Whoa. But <laughs> <laughs> the no, no, I think it's great as a uh, that is one of the <sighs> positive effects. This there's definitely a lot of talk about globalization in this show with you have American businessmen, Chinese businessmen, all the elites, they're selling organs to the Chinese. I actually did the math and a person is worth about half. If we harvested all your organs efficiently, you're worth about half a million dollars. Yo, sign uh, me the fuck up. <laughs> so we um, find they were actually the making a profit. Money. They were even making a profit. Just uh, I was doing, I kept having to convert. I would like open up in Google and convert the, the Korean won to dollars. Oh, I did that too. Yeah. Cause the numbers, they're like 45 million won and then yeah. they buy a coffee with it. Well, I'm like, wait a minute. I don't understand like, how this works. What is it? Uh, they, they had, like he walked out with like 46 billion won and that's yeah. like a few million. And that's like, like 35 million US, yeah. oh, okay. which, yeah, is, which is not, not that's nothing to sneeze at. You're uh, a mil- you're rich. You're nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. But the um yeah it's just chump change for people like the uh number number one i don't know i don't remember his real name yeah the, i think it was i have it written number down. one i don't know they Busan? Didn't the name number one he well, was number one ilnam that's his name oh, the, yeah. um here's the thing why can't it just be james <laughs> yeah or fred Watch the english dub then <laughs> <laughs> the um that is one thing I do think the if you won a billion dollars, I feel like I could spend a million dollars. 35 million? I don't know what I would do with that. I'm I sure know. I could figure I know I'd yeah, use it like, all, I'd use like I'd use 33 million of it for as much good as I possibly could. Um uh, what else I, would uh, I would give into my vices fairly quickly. I'd be dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know what you would do, Casher. <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting here smoking and chugging Mountain Dew on this podcast. <laughs> it's <laughs> a diet Mountain Dew. I'm just kidding. Okay. It's not a diet. It's not I a used diet. to have a di- bad diet Mountain Dew. Fuck my in, diet in Mountain Dew. You, you're just a pussy for not drinking I, just got, I got a regular Mountain Dew. Uh, I was lying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> your diet cigarettes, guys. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they are lights. They're not full flavors. <laughs> you're going to start um, smoking Virginia Slims like your mom? Dude, the, no. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> Are you still on American Spirits? Are you still doing that? Absolutely not. I'm smoking like the generic American. I'm no, that's so You're smoking. smoking, smoking no, I'm not going to make that joke. Paul Malls, and uh, that's because they're cheap. And uh, like my cancer cheap, I don't want it to be expensive. <laughs> that's my logic there. If I go to the very cancer and go to a hospital, it'll be cheaper. What the fuck? <laughs> One time, dude, remember when we lived together, like when we were 19, for some reason, I bought that pack of parliaments yeah. and we all took a cigarette and smoked it in the car and hot box the car with cigarettes. <laughs> I was our, eyes were like, we did. our eyes were like burning, man. I, I smoked. Uh, remember when I smoked, uh, emptied out a cigarette into a bong and smoked it <laughs> and like, lost a fucking lung at Scott. Yeah, Cause we ball. said you wouldn't do it. Yeah. And I, I did it. That mm. sounds like something a YouTuber would do. Like, hey guys, cigarette bong. Ch-. That's like a TikTok. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? YouTube, it's Custom Grow Four Twenty Heat. You know. <laughs> you, I've heard. By the way, I just want to mention this real quick. There have been some, not satanic panic, but you know what I mean. Some panic about this show because kids are allegedly imitating the games on playgrounds and stuff. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Because I mentioned I was watching this to a roommate, well, and then he came games. back. And he had Googled it and he was talking to me about that because that was the first thing on the Google results. But I read multiple articles um, 
And none of them actually gave specific on what game the kids were imitating or what they were doing. What are they playing marbles and then shooting each other? Maybe they're playing the actual squid game, but that's an actual children's game. So that's fine. We make a game of having... We we make a game of having our children throw a ball at each other and then tackle each other and give them concussions for fun. <laughs> That's our national pastime. So I don't see how the squid well, game is. It's our national pastime, dog. I don't think you've been in Spain too long, but football is definitely not our national pastime. It's more it's bigger than baseball. <laughs> baseball is our national pastime. So what you're telling no. me is, is that <laughs> children are playing the children's games on the playground that the yeah. show is basing off of. On I, the playground, I, think I guess. Also, by the way, if you're if you're if, to if, die, if you're eight if your eight year old is watching Squid Games, that's on you. Yeah, Don't let them watch Squid right. Games. Yeah, uh, there's a I children's won't, version. I won't name my friend whose kid is watching it, but you know. yeah, what we need is Squid Games babies, kind of like Muppet babies. <laughs> oh my god, I watch the shit out of that. Uh, I also think they're the, more worried about the kids that are playing fucking Squid Games mods on Roblox. Right oh yeah, now. I've seen that. Uh, um, Robo- Roblox, Roblox is staring into the void, and I wonder how that's going to affect these kids coming and then, up. And then you've got uh, Mr. No Self Awareness, Mr. Beast, who's like, I'm making my own Squid Game. Squid games. You guys can you compete for $10,000 <laughs> or whatever it was. And it's like, dude, I think you're missing the point of the show. I laughed so fucking hard at that, dude. I the, was like, okay, he's just described himself as these fucking evil billionaire elites. Like, yeah, but he he knows, and that'll he knows that that'll get people outrage and clicks, and he gets more views for his. I've never, I know this, I'm too cool, but I've never <laughs> watched a Mr. Beast video. I don't keep up with them. He had uh, some burgers. I, the first time I had heard of him was the burgers, and then I got confused with L.A. Beast, an actual good YouTuber. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I uh, I the only thing I can say about Mr. Beast is that. Uh, if you are ever inebriated, it's really fun to watch him buy up an entire GameStop. Stupid. <laughs> that shit's funny. <laughs> he just walks in and is like, I'll take everything. It, may, it just makes kids think, I don't know. I don't know. Too many influencers. It makes kids want to be influencers? Yeah. That, that's because uh, what real jobs are there left? Manufacturing's not here. <laughs> it's like, what, what economy supply does chains America are have? running dry. So uh, we won't have goods and services anyway. So don't worry, matter? comrade. The revolution is near. We won't even have to work. <laughs> Everything's yes, going to be automated, just like Grimes said. Um, Jesus Christ. That looks like say. Um, oh, we were talking about Mr. Beat. Yeah, I, I hate to admit, but his burgers are actually pretty decent. Pretty dank. He makes a good burger. <laughs> he doesn't make, they make a good burger. They yeah. make a good burger with his brand. Yeah, they yeah. make, uh, they do. I'm not. We're not gonna have a whole podcast time on Mr. Beast Burger because I probably. <laughs> yeah, we are. This is the Mr. Beast Burger podcast. Maybe he'll give us ten thousand dollars. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm curious to see how many more influencers are like. Let's do our own Squid Games and not. Well, let's do it. Okay, so drop a comment below of <laughs> what type of murderous sadomasochistic game you want to play. And we'll give you the combined revenue we've made from all so, these podcasts. So, so here's here's a good question. They're doing a season two, which I don't know why he dyed his hair red at the end. I'm still confused by that. Anime. But yeah, he turned into an He's anime the protagonist now, man. <laughs> I, uh, I'm curious to know if what games they are going to focus on the next season. I'm hoping for some hardcore, real guns. I want well, hardcore rock, paper, scissors. I feel like they'll have like maybe one or like two games and then shit will go awry. So, yeah, something will fair. happen. It, it'll be more focused on like taking down the, the corporate. I agree because we've I'm already kind of had hoping, that gimmick of the games. Kind of hoping that Gi Hoon goes full fucking Walter White and becomes the game master dude like that other dude became. Like has to like eliminate him somehow become like that's, uh, that's kind of what i was thinking i almost wondered i was just when i was trying to figure things out, i was like i wonder if all these rich bastards they actually were the winners of previous games who did the best of their money Ooh. became rich the and they became so desensitized they got sucked into it themselves it's pretty plausible 
They yeah, also he, say they also say there's a throwaway line. One of those American businessmen says Korea has the best games, meaning yeah, that this is happening other in other countries. Oh, yeah, shit. Man, I forgot about that. Yeah, I wonder what the games are in fucking America. Well, this goes they even just, deeper than I thought. They okay. just throw you in fucking downtown L.A. with a gun. And that's the death games for America. And also, you know, if it's this international, you know, at least a few world leaders have to know about it. All right. Yeah. Okay. You think Biden's old raggedy ass ain't watching this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You stay awake makes... through the whole thing. No, no. Biden is actually the old man who orchestrates it all and acts. You know. <laughs> I wish. I wish that would have been the old man's reaction instead of being like all coy about it at the end. I wish he would have been just like, "Gotcha, like, <laughs> gotcha, bitch." Like, <laughs> you're dumb. Um, he comes yeah, in like cool. sounds an alarm like Mr. Krabs when he gets his millionth dollar. I go ahead. What? I was gonna say I, I thought it was cool that they kept all the evidence of all the players in a very easy to get into <laughs> evidence room. <laughs> Oh yeah, that, that was really <laughs> smart by this criminal organization. <laughs> yeah. like, well, the uh, they they probably don't want to have it online because you know. But uh, I will say the the one twist that did actually get me was uh, I didn't expect the cop's brother to actually kill him. I was like, yeah, oh, I he's gonna it. he's just gonna try and talk him into you know whatever. Boom, dead. It's like damn. So now what? You're already in that deep. You're running this. You're responsible. I'm assuming it's not his first year. So you're responsible for, I assume, thousands of deaths. So what's one more, even well, if it's your I, brother? I'm wondering if the videos he sent actually went through to the his the police chief or not. Yeah. If Because if it's sent, because then there's going to be some sort of investigation going on or something. Yeah, like, we would know about that, wouldn't we? Because like at the end, what is the time skip between it's like a, you know, a year? Him- yeah, so we would know they, that would have to be in the news if they figure. Right, out. Here's the thing: how high does the conspiracy go? Yeah. They might. They, I mean, they might take that to Korea's J. Edgar Hoover, and he's like, "I know, I'm bet on number sixty-three. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> so, I definitely think there is. Now that we've talked about it more, I, I definitely think season two could get fucking crazy if they don't uh, just do too much, you know. Yeah, for sure. If they make a season two, because if they didn't come out with a season two, which they're going to, but if they didn't come out with season two, I would be fine with the story. I would be as too. Is. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, but I agree. They better not focus on the games and like make it, make it global, make it crazy. You have the they money. Should, they should take season two, make it like twenty years in the future, and have Gihu and have won every single game for the past one next year. <laughs> and he's just like bad shit insane. At the death games, like red hair, all spiked up, super saiyan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> going super saiyan god on them. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fucking tight. Yeah, they should bring in like powers. <laughs> <laughs> this is another superhero show. This is what we're trying to avoid. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is this going to be on the CW? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, I don't know what they'll do from here on out, but um, my hopes are high. It seems like it's got nowhere to go, but up uh, or terribly, terribly down. The the imagery of him in going into that skyscraper and the dudes on his deathbed in the very corner of that giant room. Mm-hmm. I love that kind of shit. I was like, wow. Oh yeah. You know, you know how to thematically uh, dress your set. <laughs> Get all the excess. The last challenge that the old man gave him to is like, no one's going to help that homeless man watch. And yeah. uh, once again, home- not subtle, but it doesn't no. have to be. The uh, Whenever the homeless man got helped, I like, got out of my seat. I was like, take that bitch. And then he was dead. I was like, oh, well, that's, I wish you could have seen his face. I bet he saw it, but uh, he was just like, uh, he pulled a cotton hill. He's like, do you now? I'm like, mm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's cheap segue. Muppets was tight as fuck. I had a fun time with it. Whoa, <laughs> hold on. Before we jump into another thing. Yeah. Um, well, it was okay. a nice palate cleanse. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I got to be serious. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh-huh. Muppets, I mentioned there were some good parts, but man, they didn't get much of a budget. 
Yeah, no, they didn't. Dog. I think uh, I think depending on how big this gets, like how many people watch this, we'll it. probably get something bigger. But it's like you look at other Muppets productions, and it's like what it was fuck? also a, it was less of like a Muppet movie and more a Muppet special. I get you it was a special. Like, Muppet spent like all the Muppet specials from the past had about the same budget. I mean, they had pretty big fucking decent names acting in that. I know, with like Will Arnett and John Stamos. Yeah, it was cheap because it was basically like. I would have expected that to go like straight to ABC on Halloween night. Yeah, for real. Now they so, they joke about, they joke about the budget in the production, but like it yeah. did detract from it a, a bit because like some of the scenes just felt empty to me. But oh, yeah. uh, if you, if you don't know, watching I'm uh, a big uh, Disney like Disney World Disney uh, Land like nut. Like when it comes to like rides and lore, Rip Scott, really Scott. Yeah. Scott's third world connection is too too shitty, I guess. Canceled. Um, there he is. Oh, is he back? There he is. Hello, Hello, Scott. Unmute yourself. Hi, sorry. Hello. <laughs> I was just talking about how much of a Disney ride head, and, and not just Disney, but just you know theme parks. I like I like the lore behind the shit, but of course, Disney well, here's the thing. Call? A Disney Muppets ride was head. definitely a theme park ride. There wasn't much of a plot. A bunch of stuff happened, and then it ended. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Really that but I'll be honest, it was a nice palate cleanser after watching all of Squid Game in 48 sure. hours. I just wish uh, there was a higher budget and a little more detail put into it. Um, they put all their budget into their cameos, man. That's yeah. how the specials work. Jeff um, Keighley is in this. Jeff Keighley, who uh, hosts the Game Awards, and really, the ghost of Ed Asner, which is really <laughs> weird. It's sad. I uh, I was happy to see Walter from the movies back. I feel like I haven't seen him in shit since the movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah the I one from the him. Muppets movie. He's too. I was thinking about that. The you're talking about the protagonist from the Muppets, yeah. like 2012, yeah. whatever yeah, reboot. He he's too because he is the straight man yeah. and he's joining the Muppets. He is the protagonist of that movie. He works well for the plot of that movie, but he has really no character. There's nothing interesting about his design outside of that. I don't um, expect to be like the protagonist ever again, but I do expect to see him in Muppet canon at least, you know? Yeah, I like, agree. I just didn't like, they kind of just didn't bring him back for a while. I don't, I have, like, at least I hadn't seen him in a there's, long time. Um, there's some definite good point uh, parts of this, but then other parts are just so flat and like empty. And I was like, damn, they could have done more with this, but they didn't have the money. Um, definitely, um, definitely one to watch uh, with either your family or completely zooted. Um, I'll tell you, <laughs> let's address the elephant in the room and it's the the guy who took over for kermit, kermit. the frog yeah, yeah. what did you think of that yeah. it was okay it's gonna take some getting used to it was so i didn't know it was a new person it was it did it sounded like i'll be honest i wasn't super invested in this one hour muppet special as a 20 year old <laughs> man um must watch he, it, it your dog. It sounded fine. It didn't really sound like Kermit in hindsight, but it was it was bland enough for me to not notice or care. Yeah, it also, was fine enough. It didn't take me out of it, but it definitely felt like instead of getting you know a uh, a, a Coke from the store, you got a fucking Sam's Choice Cola or something. Yeah. Well, the problem is, well, it's not a problem. It's just a creative decision. Is that you know the person who performs. The puppeteering does the voice, you know, and there's plenty of great Kermit impersonators out there, I'm sure, to do a voiceover, but they get the guy who does the puppeteering. That's just how they work over there, you know. You guys do your best Kermit impression. See if we can do it better. I can't. Do one. Just try. Yeah, come on, Scott. It's Kermit the Frog here. <laughs> uh, hey, guys. I like <laughs> scum. <Hans Gum. laughs> this is the most failed bit I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm really bad at impersonating. Scott, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? <laughs> I don't even want to try. It'll just be horrible. What would I even say? Yeah, why would you want to entertain people on a podcast? Do you think Kermit's mad that the uh, Black Lives Matter movement didn't include Green Lives? <laughs> okay, never mind. We have a new low bar for comedy on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys? Did you guys? Um. <laughs> Some people are critical of Kermit and Miss Piggy because they think it promotes abusive relationships. Oh my god! I'm into abusive relationships, so it's cool. It is, but like, <laughs> well, 
It's just a little thing. I think Kermit's kind of into it. It's, I don't think, okay, so we, we, we have to discuss Kermit as the, and Kermit and Miss Piggy as the performers and not their actual look. <laughs> what we're seeing is all on camera. It's true. We don't know what's behind the actual curtains. Yeah, they, they went away from each other for a little while, but that was really Kermit's like fear of commitment and wanting to have little tadpoles looking all weird and fucked up with Miss Piggy. You really think Kermit doesn't have the balls to stand up to her if he wanted to? I bet, I bet Kermit is a vicious person in real life. <laughs> Dude, I bet. Here's the thing. If Kermit was a person, he'd be a complete diva off camera. I feel like, I feel like Kermit is uh, the type of person that films all of his charitable events saying, <laughs> look at me. And then when he goes home, he fucking mm-hmm. talks about how he hates fucking orphans. Well, man, some of the shots of Will Arnett talking to Gonzo were so flat in front of a green screen. I was like, is this on YouTube? What is this? It looked like the actual ride from Haunted Mansion for a bit, man. Some of the scenes. Uh, I will say this. I'm glad that we got so much of Pepe the King Pro. I, King yeah, Prom. I like him. He's one of my favorites, like, ever. He's just a weirdo, and it was fun to see, especially him correcting the Spanish and then uh saying i enjoyed that again. yeah that was funny well the, they didn't make the bride very ghoulish she's just like a normal lady with like red eyes it's like in the ride she's like this creepy spirit they could have like done that up a little bit more well they yeah. were trying to i guess make it relatable that sh- this a- anthropomorphic prawn would marry her i don't know he, yeah i mean pepe is gonna simp pepe is a simp he's gonna simp everybody that, that's, um, the, that's the same chick i forget her name she's in hustle and flow and uh yeah i don't know and name. what's that movie nasa women uh hidden figures <laughs> yeah or, or uh that one guy on some awards show called it hidden fences <laughs> or what it was like so it was like mixing like two uh black political or not you know i don't know it was just like a really embarrassing mistake but <laughs> yeah. uh the the <laughs> scott's fucking frozen i guess i uh i enjoyed that they kept calling brad pitt bard pitt i don't know why that made me crack up every time he said bard pitt because he can't pronounce it right the uh the problem with this <laughs> disney muppets <laughs> straight to disney plus special is that uh there's lack of mise en place <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what i mean by that is that like you go into the mansion but you don't get a sense of like it's hard to tell like what's what where you're headed in this man it just feels like a series of like little rooms it doesn't feel it, like yeah it feels mansion. i legitimately it feels like the haunted mansion ride it feels no like, it doesn't to me <laughs> that's yeah. what i'm well, saying you, is that it feels like two reasons it doesn't feel like they're it in feels like, mansion. It feels like they're on a track. It feels like they have these like set pieces. It feels like set pieces. I, guess, um, I don't know. What was I going to say? There was a... Oh, I think the reason, one of the biggest things is like Disney wants to have faith in the Muppets to bring in an audience, but won't shell out the mu- money because I feel like they they don't have much faith in the Muppets to bring an audience anymore. That's uh, why, like, the shit we've been getting from the Muppets in recent memory has been, like, eh, like, since the second Muppet movie that came out. Even that one was, you know, not quite as good as the first one. Yeah. Um, but I think they need to revitalize it, man, bring it back again. Um, that might just be me completely hoping for something that's not going to happen because I'm a, I well, fucking love the Muppets. The but two, 2011 Muppet movie made money, didn't it? Yeah, I made a lot of money. It's just since then, it's like they they waited so long to put out the second one, and there was really like no content from the Muppets for for a long time. Well, I'm hoping this and like having the original Muppet show on Disney Plus helps. Revival. Well, uh, so there's, there's another thing or two of Muppets on Disney. They have Plus they have the world. TV show that was like The Office that wasn't very good, uh, and then uh, I, I don't remember the other things, um, but like I really want them just to revitalize the format of the original Muppet show. Give us a Muppet variety show again with a bunch of celebrities. But you know, if they did that, they would try to make it like we got to have them be like TikTokers and YouTube and influencers. It'd be like fucking JoJo Siwa every fucking week. (laughs) (laughs) Fair. Fair point. Um, I don't know. I'd love a, 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 
a full revitalization of the Muppets. Or just I mean, they fucking... kind of did that with the reboot movie, like yeah. for a second, you know. Yeah, but they didn't I'll... focus on that as they much. They have like Jack Black like tied up. That's one of my favorite. Jack Black. <laughs> I fucking love that. I love Zach Galifianakis as the Hobo King. You mean Zach <laughs> Galifianakis? <laughs> <laughs> ends with the gal. Or starts with the gal. Ends with a fuck. Um, but yeah, Muppets were cool. It's, it was. It was all right. I Muppets are cool. Uh, the ride's better. Go to the ride on <laughs> Disney. <laughs> <laughs> should've, dude, they should have made the Muppets this haunted mansion and all of them be the Muppets and bring back Dave Grohl. Yeah. From like the OG 2011 <laughs> movie. That would have been funny as fuck. That's what they should focus on. Fuck the Muppets. Bring the Muppets. Is this is this better than the Eddie Murphy haunted mansion though? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, okay. Except I've for John, there's movie. actually like a couple scenes in that uh, Eddie Murphy haunted mansion I, I, I actually like. Uh, one of them being with the crystal ball lady and then uh, the scene where they go into like the crypt and like all the skeletons go after them. Those are actually, how do you remember any of those scenes? The rest of the movie fucking easily a forgettable. I I watched that movie once. That's a shame, but here's the best part is that (laughs) Disney's uh, doing a, a a, a, you know, like a new version of the property. And I, I hope they go a little like, scary with it try and you know scare it you know like, like pg-13 level like of curse of the black pearl like where you're actually like kind of creeped out at stuff like jungle cruise had some pretty like pretty like graphic scary moments in it, i guess well, i want like For children yeah, at least i want something that has charm but also can scare kids and stuff just put uh just put jack sparrow in it rosario Dar- dawson is like one of the stars so we'll That's see cool. how that goes what they need to do is focus and be like focus and like have it be like mostly like animatronic shit, just like the ride. How that would be tight as fuck. That would be cool because we have the power and technology to make animatronic effects look fucking crazy, but we don't want to. Yeah, that's fair. So, fuck you, Jurassic Park, for that. Anyway, what else have y'all been doing? Watching anything? Uh, I've been rewatching Breaking Bad. Oh yeah. Um, I know you guys don't watch anime, but Kimetsu no Yaiba. Breaking Bad is an anime. <laughs> no, uh, Demon Slayer is back on, and that you know that made a fuck ton of money. I read the profits for that, and just the few years that it's been out has made like ten times the amount that any other like anime or media from Japan has made. So that's been pretty hype lately. But about to start Midnight Mass probably tonight. Oh yeah. I need to I, uh, start that. Soon. I was gonna do it last night, but I was in like my existential crisis mode. And I was like, "Oh, this is just gonna make me fucking afraid to go to sleep too." So, <laughs> Ooh. what about you, Scott? You been doing anything? I guess every everything I've been watching has been for this podcast. Okay, just because I should, uh, branch out more. Well, I'm just I'm just starting this uh, new job, and so I'm legit busy. I'm commuting a lot too. I commute okay. like two and a half hours a day total. I uh, and then work full time. I'm in TikTok depression mode. Oh yeah, <laughs> I watch delete TikTok. that stuff, dude. I need to delete it. I uh, except I'm not going. Also, to I've been exercising, which is a huge waste of time, and I should stop. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching a lot of Two Bears One Cave with Tom oh, Segura so and Burt Kreischer <laughs> while I so work good. out. That's about it. You should peep uh, if you like that. To check out Tiger Belly and Bad Friends too. Oh, um, I saw. I saw. Uh, yeah, of course, I watched those. I uh I saw Chappelle's new special and uh surprise it's edgy and kind of boring and transphobic. I was mm. saying, uh, transphobic. Uh, Sumner was saying that there's a point to what Chappelle's saying. And that, I know there's a point. I don't. I don't think it's valid. And I don't think Netflix uh, promoting that at the top of their queue. And then like letting go of the trans employee who was starting a protest over it. Like okay. I mean, of course. And granted, that like. Any pro- no matter what the cause of your protest, a big corporation is gonna d- let your employees go. I think one of the things we need to realize that these these big corporations, maybe some of the individuals care about people, but if we're gonna treat a corporation as a person, which is a ridiculous concept anyway, you got to realize the corporation doesn't give a crap about whatever minority or identity group you're a part of, and they only include you because they see you as somebody who can spend cash. And why people get behind any of these corporations doing anything progressive. People I mean, saying like, it's that good like, have, it's good to have representation and stuff, but like you should definitely still be skeptical of them. That's people all I'm saying, saying that like things like Amazon should have like a seat at like NATO and shit. It's like, what the Are you fuck fucking are you kidding? I've never no, I've seen that. Yeah, that's dumb. They should have a seat on my face. 
You'd let Jeff Bezos sit on your well, face? What kind of like? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I did. His asshole has to be pristine. Oh, he has a bidet. You know it. <laughs> I almost did. I almost drunkenly bought a tushy about a month ago, and I'm I want one. Like, I want one. I fell, I fell asleep like in the middle of the fucking transaction. Basically, <laughs> woke up to like my browser being on the tushy, and I was like, I was either I either took a massive shit or I was super horny. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like um. It was like Joey Diaz talking about how the the shit he like will like buy when he's like fucking ripped. And he said like he was like he's like why the fuck did I order band aids through the mail? You order who? And then he like was like and then he found himself ordering flights a flight to tunisia in december and he's like why, <laughs> why would i do this i would love excess money to make fucking purchases like that usually i wake up and regret it and i'm like fuck i gotta call and cancel this yeah <laughs> um but yeah not not watching a whole lot right now i like i said i want to watch midnight mass there's a couple other shows my friends have told me oh you guys don't really fuck with big mouth but big mouth has got a new season coming out i do not month. fuck with big mouth I fucking love that show. And then, uh, oh, you just came out like two days ago, the new season of that. And uh, I was very skeptical at first about watching that a couple of years ago when it came out. And then the hype was big enough to, you know, allure me a little bit. And that show is pretty fucking good. Hmm. And what what is that? You? It's uh, it's this like, it's a drama thriller type thing about this guy who is like a pretty much a sociopath who follows his girl around to make him his girlfriend and like memorizes all her stuff and completely manipulates his girl into dating him. And then it just gets fucking weird from there. Hmm. Second season was fucking wild. There's some pretty cringy moments in it, but all in all, pretty solid, solid addition to the Netflix cast of shit they've got. So for uh, Halloween, when we do Halloween cast, what, you said you had an idea, or I'm trying to think of what shit we could talk about. Halloween hot takes. Oh yeah, hot takes. Okay, I'm trying we'll to talk look shit forward. About. Look forward to that, people. If you're I'm, listening, I'm trying to trigger all you fucking Neanderthals. You're out of focus as fuck. Me? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? There you go. What? Uh. Oh, out of focus. There you go. Now it is. <laughs> okay. What's up, Scott? It looks like I, you're having some trouble today. I got that third world internet. You know me. Yeah. Third world internet. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> or we, I probably. Anyway, guys, uh, <laughs> I think that wraps us up for this episode. Uh, stay tuned for next week. What What are we doing next week? Oh, Dune. Dune is next week, boys. And Dune cast. And anyone in between. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go see that shit on probably Friday Scott's night. Scott's frozen again. It's a good image of him frozen. <laughs> Cap it. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Reaction uh, photos you. for days. That's an NFT now. If you want to buy it, hit me up. <laughs> okay. NFT of Scott, the expat for sale. Uh, hit up Austin Casher. $250,000. It's yours. Okay. And we'll <laughs> use that to fund uh, the next cast. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs>